Will this ball make you a better fisherman? Today, we're gonna figure that out. But what exactly is this ball, and why could it make you a better fisherman? Well, I'm here to tell you that this is more than just a plastic ball. It's actually slam packed with technology that will allow you to catch fish easier than ever before. Deeper is a mobile fish finder that can be either cast with a rod from the bank or it can be attached to the side of a boat or a kayak. It has two main features, one of which is a 2D sonar and the other is bottom mapping. The feature that personally excites me the most is the ability to map the bottom topography of literally any body of water that I want. I want to set the record straight though, topography maps are nothing new, but they are traditionally only available for big public lakes and other well-known public bodies of water. But now with the power of this ball, I can literally make topography maps of any pond any lake or any body of water that I want to fish. And by doing so, this will allow me to make the best fishing decisions on any given day. If you take a look here behind me, you'll see a lake. And this lake, I have fished this lake hundreds of times before. I have fished this lake for two decades. And my hope is that today, I can go out here, use the deeper, and discover secrets in this lake that I have never found before. And I know this lake pretty well, but I'm pretty sure if I go out there with the topography mapping, I'm gonna be able to find stuff that I have never seen ever. So let's go ahead and put deeper to the test. First things first, we need to get this thing rigged up. And the way I'm gonna do that is two ways today, actually. First way is I'm gonna tie this thing onto a fishing rod. You can actually tie this thing to the line if you're a bank angler and cast it out and use both this 2D mapping sonar and then you can also use the topography mapping as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie this thing on here and let's go ahead and give this thing a chuck. In case y'all are wondering, I just tied a traditional fishing knot. This is a clinch knot, and you basically could use any kind of fishing knot that you want to. Just tied it straight onto here. And for the bank fishing position, you want this little thing on the side. These little hooks can be moved around. There's one on the bottom, one on the side, and one on the top. For the bank fishing, you want it on the side thing. Now that I have this thing tied on, I can go ahead and connect it. So what you're gonna wanna do is just pull up the companion app, throw this thing in the water, and as soon as I throw this in the water, I should be able to connect to it. Let's go ahead and connect. We're connected now, so I can go ahead and use this thing. Let me go ahead and make sure all the settings I have on are correct. Time to give this thing a chuck. So let me go ahead and bomb that sucker out there and we're gonna reel it in just a little bit at a time and see if we get some mapping here. So at this point, I've taken quite a few casts around the dock and I've mapped out a good section of what's kind of directly around it out here to my left, as you can tell. And it is kind of laying out how I figured it would from taking a bunch of casts and stuff with crankbaits off of these docks over the years. I figured that most of this body of water was between like five and eight feet, nice and gradual as it kind of went out that direction. I figured there was a drop off somewhere, but I never knew where it was. And it seems like that drop off is right on the very far edge of some of my casts. So what I'm going to do now is actually take this deeper right here, take it off of the rod. And what I really wanted to do today was take this thing out on the kayak. So we're going to go ahead and take this out and we're going to attach it to this little thing in the jig right here. This is the little boat mount. So let me go ahead and cut off the deeper from my rod and we're going to get it tied on there. Here we go. Give that a clip and let's go ahead and put this on the paddle board. Really probably should have thought about this before I put everything in the kayak. I think we can get it though. Got it in. That was an ordeal. Go ahead and drop the pedal drive and we should be good to go. Let's hop onto the paddle board and let's go ahead and do some scanning. I wanna work out this way towards where I kinda lost range with my cast where the water started to drop off and kind of search around this area out here and see what kind of scans we can get. Right now it is early spring and these fish are starting to push up into the flats and they're going to be kind of positioned either A, up in the flats themselves or they're going to be positioned up against areas that are like transitional areas into the flats. So the drop off points adjacent to the flats. So that's kind of what I'm looking for out here to see if we can find some drop offs. And I'm hoping that if we target those drop offs, we can pick off a few fish. 
It probably would be easier if I pedaled doing this. That would make a little bit more sense than trying to paddle around. I don't know, I just feel like standing up, I guess. I've been pedaling around for a little bit now and a few things have caught my attention. So the bank out to my right drops off a lot faster than I expected and I'm seeing a lot of stumps. I don't know if y'all can see that stump right there, but these are stumps on the bottom or big rocks. So that's something I'm super interested, especially since the fish are spawning, there's a good chance that they will kind of stage up on those as they kind of push back into this pocket to spawn. Right there, those stumps are in like five or six feet of water and the bass could definitely spawn that shallow. It's possible, but it's probably unlikely because the water in here is a little bit on the dirty side. So I would think they would probably use that kind of as a staging spot to push back here, especially some of those big females. So that could be some stuff to target. So I'm definitely interested in that. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off for a minute and we are going to take a few minutes to fish. I wanna try some of this stuff that I actually found with a deeper. So let me go ahead and pop off my first bait today this is a flat-sided kvd crankbait and this thing dives six to eight feet this crawfish color is deadly in the spring and this bait in general is an awesome springtime bait but the area that i was talking about is right over here most of it was between like five and eight feet so this crankbait should be perfect for targeting it Hopefully I didn't stir up too much commotion there going over it a few times, but we're gonna give this a few cranks, see if we can't bump it off some trees and trigger a nice reaction strike. Ooh, there's a, I just ran it off a tree right there. <laughs> what would you know? <laughs> Definitely getting some good bottom contact, which is exactly what you want when you're cranking. You want it to be making some contact with the bottom, bumping off of stuff. And that is really great for triggering a nice reaction strike. No luck with this crank up in the deeper area. Let me go ahead and switch to a shallower bait and we're gonna work our way into this cove and see if we can find a fish up there. Breaking out the old two tap. This is one of my favorite baits. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you definitely probably know that. So <laughs> let's go ahead and give this thing a toss. See if there's something up here that wants to munch this thing. Hoping this thing just gets annihilated bass hit this thing so dang hard it's honestly ridiculous <laughs> is that a fish oh golly i thought <laughs> i thought that was perfect timing that would be a tree of some sort those tree pounders really feel like a big one sometimes came off there's one Got her first fish of the day up there in that shallow pocket. Let's go. Come on in, big dog. Oh, I don't know if she's stuck on something. She just got a lot heavier. What? I think she's stuck on something. What in the world? It's definitely a fish. What's going on here? What is going on? Oh, came off, whatever it was. <laughs> there we go. A nice spring fatty. Let's stinking go. That is about as healthy of a fish for that size as you can ask for. I mean, just a meatball, golly. Got almost a three pounder and a one pounder's body. I mean, the tiny mouth, but the gut on this guy is absolutely outrageous. Let's pop that out of there. And let's go ahead and send this big old mama on her way. Crush that thing. Maybe there's a few more up in the shallow water. According to the area I scanned over there, she's probably in about four or five feet of water. That is good to know. So I'm gonna try to target stuff that's similar to that and see if we can't get some kind of pattern. Switching over to a little creature bait to do a little pitching and flipping up against this island. Oh, golly, I miss that fish. There's one. Nice. I <laughs> got him on the flip. Let's go smoke that thing. Almost immediately, my like third cast with that little creature bait and that little guy came up and smoked it. 
Nice little fish. Let's see if we can get a few more on this island, flipping these trees. Golly, ferocious little guy. That bait was all beat up from last time I was fishing. So let me go ahead and switch to a fresh one. These are Rage Menaces, in case y'all are wondering. Very versatile little soft plastic, a great chatterbait trailer, and just a nice little bait that gets the job done. Nothing too fancy, just efficient and simple. Saucy right there. Come on, be a big in there. Be a big in. There one. There we go on the point. <laughs> oh, another freaking piggy. Oink oink. <laughs> That's the best one of the day. Get on, get on up here, big mama. Fatty, man. Golly, the fish in this lake have gotten so much better over the years. When I fished this lake as a kid, literally all you would catch is one, one and a half pounders. A two and a half was super rare. But now over the course of the last like two or three years, every time I've come out here, I'm catching really healthy, super fat, filled out. I mean, golly, that is a fat fish. I mean, some tanks, man. It's just a matter of time before I run across a mega. I mean, it's not that long of a fish. It might even be four. You know what, let's throw, let's throw it on a scale just to see. I'm saying high three, three pound, 3.66 pounds. That is a respectable bass. We'll let her right back on in here where we got her and see if she goes right back up to that bank. She might be on a bed up there. Seems like these fish will like this island and they are loving the Rage Menace. We are just getting started with this thing and they've been smoking it so far. I've hardly worked my way around this thing and I've caught two. Golly, oh my God, I didn't even feel that fish hit it. I thought I was stuck. <laughs> I kept trying to skip it way up underneath that thing. And sure enough, there was a fatty up there. That goes to show you guys how important a good cast can be. I cast it on the outside edge of that tree like probably five or six times. And this fish wanted nothing to do with it. The first time I get all the way up underneath that branch, that fish smoked it. Just out here catching slabs. Big old pancakes, golly. Well, I fished out both of these islands pretty good. So I'm gonna work my way over to another cove and see if there's some fish pushed up into it. So I just scanned this area with the deeper. And when it comes to this cove right here, the biggest, deepest area of this lake is out here to my right, and it comes up really fast, basically right here as you get into this cove. So that creates a nice transition line where these fish can kind of push in and push out as the weather changes. So I think there's a good chance we might find a stronger, or I would say like a larger accumulation of fish up in this corner. The only thing that I'm concerned about is all this construction and stuff going on right here. There used to be a boathouse and it looks like they've ripped that out of the water. So I don't know how much construction and just general disturbance has been going on in this cove over the last few weeks. If it's been a lot, it could have kept the fish out of here, but I'm hoping that is not the case. Got him, got him, oh, get out of the net. No, 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 that's the best one, it went through the net. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what do we got going on here? Golly, get up over that. Oh, baby, that is a tank. Oh my gosh, I didn't know if a fish could get up underneath this net or not. 
clearly they can because that is the best one of the day <laughs> i just wanted to try it because like i said there was a kind of a like a little boathouse type thing here and they took it out and they put all this riprap in there and i figured that it might be a nice place for a fish to hang out and sure enough a big old mamma jamma was hanging out right there let's fire up this scale and clear it and see what this fish weighs i'm saying it might be close to five 4.65 pounds that is a spectacular fish man i was very hesitant to kind of cast behind this little orange wall right here because i really didn't think a fish could get up underneath it like obviously small fish could swim through it but i didn't know if there was a gap big enough for this guy to get through 